This is gonna be not the most detailed on nitrogen purging or nitrogen pressure testing, but just somewhat of a how-to because I do realize high school auto shop was removed from schools a long time ago. So having welding class and uh, auto shop, you don't get to use these things. So there's a lot of people still learning. So here we got a gauge. Doesn't have to be this gauge. It could be the old fashioned kind, cheapest eBay, doesn't matter. Um, gonna do a pressure test and actually uh, we'll go through the purge first but I'm gonna do a pressure test at 200 psi so I'm gonna set this up here do I ever have it cranked up yeah I do I have it cranked up oh let's see if I could read it might be above 200 psi right about there I think it's a little bit above but we're gonna find out in a minute I pressure test or purge through the high side and let it bleed out the low side you can see we're under a, a vacuum right now at 200 microns. And I'm gonna close off the low side as we're gonna purge through the high side. I already injected oil. This can't start, it's missing transmission fluid. So I'm at this body shop. They were replacing all the parts. This is all new stuff here, new condenser. So I already inject, put in uh, 40 milliliters, usually, I like going through the low side and let the oil go into the compressor, it's just a small amount, not inject it right into the evaporator and let it distribute through the new condenser and everything like that. But in this case, since I'm not going to start, test or run this air conditioning or this engine because there's no transmission fluid in the system, I'm just going to fill up the system 100% and walk away. That's it. There's nothing I can do because I can't start it. So I have, let's see what our pressure is right now. So you see the low is, low is uh, closed. Let's open the high. The vacuum's still on. You're going to want to shut that. Otherwise, you're going to make a big mess if you put 200 PSI into your vacuum pump. And possibly damage it and throw oil all over the place. So you can see the hose is vacuuming out right now. So I'm going to close off the valve we now have a vacuum in the high side hose let's throw pressure I don't have this valve down yet it's still not closed down I want to see what the pressure I have set right here because I can't see these gauges too well so let's put a little pressure in there see where we're at we are at 180 195 200 okay I need to back this valve off a little bit back it off 246 is a little much so this is the one thing I don't like about the really tiny gauges and my eyes are getting a little blurry is uh let's bleed off a little of the pressure here let's see where we're at why did I lock my finger must have hit somehow I just locked the aperture on my screen Okay, and it won't move, everything is locked up. Sorry guys, you're gonna have a blurry uh, thing going on here. So let's open this back up, opened up. Let's put the pressure back on. And we're at 172. So I'm gonna crank up the pressure a little bit, turning clockwise, righty tighty, lefty loosey. You're gonna watch that go up a little bit. There I go, I just gave it a little more. We're gonna pressure test that roughly, there we go. That's good enough for government. This one creeps up. It's not, this style gauge is not like the old brass ones where it's more instant reacting. This is a little slower reacting. So you see we're at 205 PSI. So that means it's going to pump up the system to 205 PSI. All I'm testing for, because this came in here as a, as a working vehicle, is I'm checking their fittings right here for leaks because that's the only thing they touched on the air conditioning was replacing the damaged condenser. So let's open up the high side right here. It's open. I have this open, this open. So there's 206 PSI sitting right here. As soon as I crank this valve down, that's gonna go into the high side. It's gonna shoot in. There's already 40 milliliters of refrigerant oil and dye inside this I injected prior to hooking this up. So when the pressure goes in, the nitrogen is gonna push, you can see that one line that goes down, it's gonna push the dye and the oil backwards into the low, so these bottom one, two, three, four, because you see that little bitty 
See that little piece of metal sticking out right there? That's a separator. So one, two, three, four fins, the oil and the dye are gonna go in reverse flow that's gonna go into the bottom of the receiver dryer, right through that little point right there. It's gonna fill the bottom and shoot upwards through the screen into the receiver dryer, into desiccant material, and get distributed backwards in a big rush. The rest of the oil and dye that are on this side of the line will get injected right into the expansion valve with the nitrogen because it's 200 PSI of pressure, high velocity through a small line and be forced through the expansion valve into the evaporator. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you don't have to watch me turn this. Let's watch the gauges. Let's look at the low side. Actually, yeah, I'll leave the low side on. Usually I take the low side off because um, I'm not starting this vehicle. There we go. And you see that low side slowly coming up. Oh, it'll help if I open. Why is it so slow? Okay. Something. Oh, we're, we've got 1500 PSI in there. Oh, I don't have that. Right there. Slowly coming up. Yeah, this, uh, this kind of valve, this Victor unit is really slow when you have it cranked down. Let's crank it up a little more. Slowly get them. I could grow old on this thing, man. Come on, let me crank this puppy up there and I'll just control it by this right here. Okay, they were at 200 PSI. That's on the high side, not the way. I just shut off the nitrogen flow. So you see it slowly going over. Now, if you have a hard shut off expansion valve, some of these will shut off and you might have 200 PSI here and you'll see like 110 PSI or something like that and it'll, it'll just stop. And it might slowly bleed over. This is what a lot of old timers are used to. They say, oh, it has to bleed over to the low side. If it's not, that means it has a bad expansion valve. Not necessarily. Not if it's a hard shut off expansion valve. Okay, we're at 160 and 160. Nothing will happen because I turned off my flow of nitrogen. Let's give it a little more nitrogen. And remember, I cannot test the system because they have no transmission fluid, so I can't run this vehicle for a test. Okay, I just shut off the nitrogen flow. more I don't care if I go a little bit over 200 on this vehicle that's good enough for government work now let me grab which I wasn't prepared because I was not going to make this video but I decided because these guys who want to know so big blue this stuff stays wet and tacky and bubbly for a long time so I'll turn that on, on sprayer. Nope, not that one. You don't want it spraying out. You want a little stream. You don't want to make bubbles. Just put a little on there. That's it. Backside. We're not running this thing, so we're not going to test this with the refrigerant in it. And that'll stay tacky for a long time. So while I perform the rest of my procedures, paperwork or anything like that, if I came back 10 minutes from now, under these ambient conditions, this will still be wet. And if there were any bubbles, the bubbles would form and keep stacking up on each other and you'd see them. So you see the nitrogen is off. We're at 200. Now, someone says, what if you wanna do a nitrogen pressure decay test? You wait 10 or 15 minutes. You let the gas temperature stabilize to whatever the temperature is inside the pipes of the vehicle, otherwise, if the gas goes in cold into a hot vehicle, it'll expand and your numbers will go up. If the gas came from a part of your shop where it was hot and the vehicle is cold, then the gas will shrink, uh, go down, contract, and your leak test numbers will go down. Then you have another thing, hoses relaxing. 
So some hoses, especially your refrigerant charging hoses and the hoses on the vehicle will slowly expand because there's a material in here and it'll expand a little bit and stretch for a few minutes. And so if you right away, you, you record your number, you go into the leak test and then you, okay, I'm gonna test from now. And you see the numbers go down because the refrigerant hoses expanded a little bit. The refrigerant lines expanded in the next 10 minutes and you'll lose a few tenths of a PSI. That's why you must wait 10 or 15 minutes before you do that. And uh, if I didn't, if I just rush into it, see where it says tightness test. Let's say I'm gonna go jump right into the tightness test. Let's say 10 or 15 minutes went by and you can see this one flickering a little bit, but go right into tightness test, make sure the nitrogen's off. Open up the other side too, so I could equalize. There we go. Steadied out, I hit the tightness test. Now the counter is ready to count. It says press enter to start, press enter. This will show your loss. You see where it says zero point zero. This reads in tenths of one PSI, not even one PSI, tenths of a PSI. You can see the timer going. And from this moment on, it'll keep track of the pressures. And if the pressures chance, like if that nine right there, that point nine drops to a point eight, you'll see this go 0 0.1 and it'll have a little negative mark on it. Now let's say my gas was cold. It was in the basement or a cold part of the shop and I brought it out to the front of the shop and this engine was running and it's hot and it's 100 degrees outside and all the pipes, everything you touch down here is like 130 degrees PSI uh, Fahrenheit. And I immediately put the cold gas into the system and immediately hit press enter and it was at 202.9 PSI. And I walk away, I come back five minutes later and I see it says 204 PSI. You go, wow, how did it go up? It went up because the gas you just put in expanded. And that's it. And so you come back 10 minutes later and you see this is still 0, 0.0. After 10 minutes, you know you're good to go. If you see 0 0.1, it still could be good to go. There could have still been a little settling. And as you've seen, I did not allow this to rest before taking my pressure measurements. And it's looking pretty good right now. Different vehicles, different materials will do different things to you and throw you off sometimes. Some rubber hoses really stretch a lot, some don't. All right guys, I'll see you later. That was it. And other than I'm gonna go through the purge and I let we put in the high side, <clears throat> I'll bleed out the low side. I made videos on this. Then I evacuate and then I purge uh, more nitrogen up to zero. And I'll do that about three times. I can't run this car. So remember this vehicle is unrunnable. I'm just gonna fill it up. See you later.